Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to take a look at a car that I, not that long ago, sold to my mum and they've had a bit of a prang in it. And the insurance company have written this car off and mum sent me a picture of it and said, do you think this, this should be a write-off? And I kind of explained my theory on car insurance at the moment and how they're writing cars off for very minimal damage because all the expenses of hire cars, storing the cars, getting time in body shops and things like that, probably means that they'd be better off just taking a cash alternative and keeping the car and we could help them fix it. And it looked from the picture that she sent me, very minimal damage, but now that Dan has collected it from the body shop for us and delivered it, sounds like it might be a little bit worse. So let's go and have a look. Right, so this is, I had one picture, I could probably show you on my phone actually, of what this looked like. This was the picture I had, which I guess was at the moment that it happened. In fact, it looks in better shape there than it does here. And I said, oh yeah, that looks very minimal. Bear in mind it's the only picture I had. It looks like it probably wants a crash bar and a bumper and that's about it. But actually I think if we look around it, we've got, a crease in the rear quarter here so i don't know how much i mean i'm sure it can be pushed back in there's quite this bumper is obviously pushing the boot up there's quite a big gap around there isn't there um obviously wants a rear bumper if the crash bar i mean i don't know without taking the bumper off you don't know what it's meant to look like whether it looks all right or not but yeah otherwise it looks around here. My mum in typical, like, wanting to keep costs low fashion was a bit like, don't really care if it's really ugly as long as it's all right. You could probably bend that bumper around, clip it back up and tape it. And legally, you could probably drive it, but... Oh, that's interesting. The boot does open perfectly fine. If you look inside the boot, there's no creases in there. So the floor pan is fine. I guess that's why they've got the floor up, because they've checked that but there's no obvious signs of any of that having crumpled up. It looks like there's a bit of water in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's not because the boot is sitting a bit funny. So maybe the boot's squiffed over here that way, but I, mean, I bet you that's not much of an issue just to adjust those hinges back. I thought this could be well under a grand to repair it, because I thought really all it wants is a rear crash bar and a rear bumper, and I bet they're quite cheap, but we are gonna have to have something done here we will have to look into that just trying to see if there's any other secondary damage on it front is fine yeah it's just the rear so yeah perhaps it's pinched up there a little bit but it probably is because that's been pushed up and bowed up isn't it so by the time you maybe push that back i don't know if you can work that back but i would have thought you could it's pretty minimal isn't it and then mechanically check it, I guess. I assume, I don't know, even know whether it's been classed as a category N or a category S. What I can tell you is we, they valued this car, as far as the insurance are concerned, at just over, in fact, let me see what it says on the message. So it's insured with the AA. They valued the car at 7,167 pounds, which is more than they paid for the car 10 months ago. Unsurprising because I'm a very generous person and obviously did them a very good deal when they bought it. The garage, said it was a 5,600 pound repair, therefore they've written it off. And the AA have paid them 5,670 pounds in order to keep the car and have it repaired themselves. The long and short of it is there always would have been a claim. There was no way of getting around this car having a category against it. You can't just say at this point, oh, I'd rather not. But I'm certain that we can fix this for a lot cheaper than 5,600 pounds. But how much cheaper, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out just how cheap it is and whether, you know, this was a bit of a overreaction to write this off. And I'll tell you what, we will do a vehicle score check on it as well and find out exactly what category this car now has against it. Right, so one thing Dan just pointed out, he was saying that when he went to pick this up, that it was rubbing on the tire. And in here, you can see actually that this section of like the floor pan has been pushed in here and it's like hitting into the tire and you can kind of see like a, 
the gouge in the tire. So it seems like the crash bar has protected the boot floor, but it's come through here and it's pushed us in here. You can see like the seam seal has all, so that is gonna need pulling out. So it's a bit beyond just sticking a bumper on it and painting it up. It is gonna need some pulling and adjusting. So it's never as easy as they make out, is it? Let's get in the office to see if we can find a bumper for a 2019 Corsa and maybe a rear crash bar just to start because we could get it somewhere close and I'll have to put some phone calls in, see if we can find a body shop. I think I'll try Brad at BLS Body Repairs, see if they can do anything to help pull that rear quarter out. And if they can, we will get it dropped straight down to them. Hello, BLS Body Repairs. Hi mate, it's Joe from Bear Motors. Hello mate, all right? Not too bad yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, I've got my mother's car here. It's just been written off. Uh, right. The, um, the picture she sent me looked like it just wanted a rear bumper, but now that it's we've got it here, it's obviously yeah. crumpled up the rear quarter a little bit and sort of pushing onto the tyre. Is that right. something you could tackle or...? Yes, mate, we can give it a go by all means. Cool. Um, what's... How desperate are is it to be done? Has she got another vehicle she can use? Sort of yeah, thing? she'll be fine. You can do it in your own time. What I was going to suggest is, I've just been looking through eBay, I could get a, a, a rear bumper, which you're obviously going to want, and a rear crash bar, which it may or may not need, for about 250 quid. So, Okay. What what car is it, mate? It's only a little Corsa. Corsa E. Okay. Um, what might be worth a shout is who... We use for second-hand panels sometimes. Uh -huh. They're called um, Silver Lake Salvage. Okay. Um, you may well be able to get a rear bumper the same colour as well, which I have done before on a few vehicles I've had here. Got, Got you. Wings, doors, the same colour, and just polish them and put them on, basically. Well, well, how are you for space at the minute? Because it's still on our trailer at our, our place. We could always drop it down yeah, to mate. you. You'll be able to have a look at it, and then if you want to source parts, you think they'd be cheaper, then by all means. That's fine, mate. That's not a problem at all. If you want to get it over today, bring it on over and we'll um, we'll take a look at it. Smash him. I'll do that now. All right. Nice one. Thank all you, right. Mate. Cheers, bub. Cheers. Bye-bye. Sorted. That takes it all off my plate, doesn't it? Right, the other thing I want to do is a vehicle score check on it so we can find out exactly what category this is. Originally, I assumed it was category N, which means non-structural, because to me it just looked like it was that rear bumper. But having seen that rear part of the body pushed in, could be a category S. It'd be good if it's the category N because it's you know probably the one that's going to affect the value the least. But we will find out. So I've gone to vehiclescore.co.uk. I'm going to enter our registration, uh, which is Victor Lima 19 Foxtrot Hotel Sierra. Check the car. It's going to give us a score anyway. 816 out of 999, which is amazing. What do you expect? They bought it from Bear Motors. What I'm going to do is their full history check. This is the ultimate plus check, and it's going to tell us pretty much everything we're going to want to know. Uh, and not forgetting to use our promo code, which is Shifting Metal 20 It's going to give us 20% off. It's now only £9.56, so if you're looking to buy a car and you want to check a car's history, I highly recommend doing this. Right, it's generating our report. Right, here we are, this is what your report is gonna look like. Uh, it tells us it's a Vauxhall Corsa Energy, manual transmission, five gears, quite handy information actually. Uh, and as we go down, we can see we have got an amber warning for the insurance category. It checks all these other things, certificate of destruction, finance, whether it was a taxi, all that sort of stuff. But obviously what we're interested in is the insurance category. So record found, category S, structural damage, uh, which happened on the 23rd of September this year. And it was entered into, oh, literally today they have entered it in because the day's the day we've picked it up from the body shop. And I guess they don't really enter it until they've figured out exactly what they're going to do. So it is a category S. Um, I guess that makes sense now that we know that it's pushing in there on the wheel. Hopefully we can still get this sorted out quite cheaply and we'll see what happens with this car. Right, it's a couple of weeks later. Our Corsa is back from the body shop. It's actually had a new tire fitted here this morning and we sent it to MOT and it's passed. It's back here so we can have a look around it. 
I'll pull it out. We can look at where the damage was, see what it looks like now. And then we'll talk about how much it costs to fix this versus how much they got paid back and what that means for our insurance prices. Let me pull it out. Didn't spill a drop. Wouldn't recommend that on the road. That's how you end up having accidents like this. Anyways, here we are. This was the back end, obviously. Oh, ignore the, uh, the fact that the towing eye cover's missing. Body Shop forgot that. We have got one on the way. They're gonna paint it and do it for us. This is the tire we had to replace because if you remember, the kind of floor pan of the car was bent into the wheel and it just kind of shredded that tire. So that needs a clean. And yeah, it's back together. Admittedly, from my standpoint and from the body shops, we did have a sort of discussion and he said, how far do you want me to go with it? Do you want it just back to, you know, reasonably okay and, you know, on the road again, or do you want it completely right? And I think I probably said before that uh, my mum's really not fussed about cars. She was like, as long as it's, you know, okay and we'll go through an MOT and whatever, they don't care because I think there's a fair chance it'll probably just get bumped about again. So that's what I said to Brad, who's done this. So he has done his very best, but the one thing you'll notice is the boot is slightly off to this side. They've kind of bumped it over. They've had to space out the light and it is very tight here, look. Now, obviously they had the capabilities of sorting that completely right. But I did just say, look, it doesn't matter. That They will not care as long as the boot shuts. They just want it working again. And obviously they could have spent more time getting it right, but they didn't want to spend the money either. So for what we've spent, which I'll tell you uh, in a minute, I think it's actually looking pretty good. And obviously it passed MIT, no problems whatsoever. They had a weird thing apparently with their insurer. I can't remember who it was, that because it had been written off, because they'd been paid out, so they, they gave them the option well, they decided to write it off, so they weren't going to repair it because they, they decided it was uneconomical to repair. So they gave them the option of having the car back and they would give them a payout, which would allow you to get the work done, I guess, uh, which is what they did. But they then put a stipulation in that they had to have the car re-MOT'd within a month. Like it had to be fixed and repaired and MOT'd, otherwise they would cancel the insurance, apparently. Not that it would cause you problems just to take up insurance to someone else again. I don't really know, but... Either way, that was apparently the stipulation they put in, which we've done it by the skin of our teeth because it is tomorrow that it was due. Now, I think you probably agree that if that was going down the road, you probably wouldn't give it a second look. Those of you who are looking for damage, you'll see it, obviously. Stuff doesn't quite line up perfectly and the light's slightly out in order to fit right with the boot. But uh, like I say, we did this on a budget. I haven't actually had my bill from Brad just yet, but he did say when he was looking at it that the bumper he got for 60 quid, um, and then obviously he's painted it, they spent a bit of time with the dozer getting it out. I think he said it was gonna be about seven or 800 quid. Then obviously we've paid for a tire, which was for us about 30 pounds plus VAT, and then MOT. So let's just say, for argument's sake, because I don't know exactly at the moment, it was 900 quid. And you probably remember better than I do, because it's been a couple of weeks for me. Um, but from the beginning of this video, I said they got paid out 5,600 pounds. So they're four and a half grand up, the car's repaired, and yeah, they still have a working car, it's still insured, and it makes you wonder why our insurance prices are so high. Don't get me wrong, if you took this to an insurer's kind of body shop, they would want to use an original bumper, which might have been considerably more than the 60 pounds we paid, and they would have spent more time getting it perfectly right. But even if you said it was double, and it was 1,800 quid, 2,000 pounds, they still would have been, you know, three and a half grand up. And the insurance company will have paid out quite a bit of money for the higher car they had. And obviously the other driver was the one who was actually to blame. So they'll be the ones that would be paying for it and they would have been paying for their own car as well. But it is a bit daft really when you think that this could be fixed so easily and within quite a short amount of time, but because they want to do it in a set way with the original parts and original parts are on back order. We're kind of being held ransom by some of these manufacturers at the moment. Body shops are queued up for absolutely miles. It seems weird that they would write it off for this. Um, you would have thought they could have quite easily for a budget of 5,600 found a, an approved garage and got it fixed, but they couldn't. Um, so yeah, there we are. It, I mean, if I wouldn't sniff at an extra four and a half grand and my car back if I could get it fixed. But let me know what you think in the comments. Obviously, like I said, it's not 100% perfect repair. 
This won't be the judge of Brad, one of our body shop guys, work. This was me saying, just like get it back together because my mum literally doesn't care. But most people don't really care that much, do they? So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is why we're paying way more than we used to for insurance? Would you be happy to just get, you know, half decent repair on your car cheaper or take it to a body shop yourself that isn't necessarily an insurance approved body shop to get the job done? I don't know. So it's a bit interesting question really. So let me know what you think in the comments. And while we're on the subject of category S write-off cars, we've still got our Cat S Porsche Cayenne that is up for raffle for just two pounds. And funnily enough, do you know what we actually found out? I'll put them on the screen now. Um, we weren't sure what happened with this, but we thought it was something with the front end because the bonnet doesn't quite fit right here. We are gonna have a play around with that when we get a chance to put it back as we can. Um, the, we got this for, it owes me about 10,000 pounds. It's got 20,000 pounds of optional extras on it. Interestingly, the day after we posted this video, we had a phone call from the guy who owned the car when it was written off. So we now know exactly what happened. And in fact, in the post today, I've had some of the service history that we were missing from the early years. We've had a spare key and we've had the book pack and all that sort of stuff. And I have got pictures of what happened to this. What happened was no other car involved. It was just uh, a stormy weather and a tree fell down in front of him and kind of ripped the wings and things off. So we'll put those pictures on the screen. Looks quite dramatic, but actually very minimal damage. Um, but yeah, just interesting. What a small world. We put that video out and the guy was straight on saying what a nice car it was. And he's gonna buy some tickets as well. Can you imagine the odds of him not only seeing it, but then if you want it, but there we are. Don't forget to get your tickets. You can buy 10 tickets, which is gonna cost you 20 quid, but I will give you an extra five for free. That is it for this video. I just thought it'd be, we don't very often do crash repair stuff, but seeing as we, this was for Mumsy, I thought we'd document it and tell you how much it actually cost us, the end result and all that sort of stuff. So that's it, I'm waffling. Thank you so much for watching. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.